Oh, okay. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Greg Clayton, and I'm here with Mark Skinner and Kenneth Nelson. We are the Three Black Rad Grads, and uh, we are doing a photo talk, eating together. Uh, you know, we've been getting together during these shows because we enjoy talking about photography. We lost Mark again. I hope he comes back. And um, I'm uh, somewhere outside of Fresno, California, and uh, we do these photo talks. You know, we do shop talk. And uh, today's topic is taking better photos. Everybody is interested in taking better photos, even the professionals. You know, so um, this is probably part one. And uh, just a pop quiz, hot shot. Who am I? Renee Magritte. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With an orange instead Ding, of an Ding. apple. With an orange. I'm in California. I had to, to throw it up for, you know, I look. That is so yeah, you surreal. Know so <laughs> surreal, man. <laughs> hey, it's that art school, man. It's, it's addictive. Um, so, uh, did I say, did we say uh, an order yet? Or am I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set it off. You're doing it uh, first just, presentation. Yeah. I got the first presentation. I want to say a uh, happy holidays. We're coming up on that. Um, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, uh, or whatever you celebrate or not, you know, happy fifth of tequila, you know, whatever, whatever you want. All right. So, uh, throughout my first picture, Ken, um, what I wanted to talk about is, uh, light and uh composition and um you know just the just the how you treat the entire image so um what uh you know since it's the season i uh, can't see the image but uh what it is it's like a house there you go uh, uh a pastel colored house at twilight and uh i kind of went and let the uh let the camera take the picture as far as uh, do the, excuse me, the automation, I just let the automation take the picture. And uh, it usually gives a, a, a fair rendering, you know, a usable rendering of, um, of uh, an image or, you know, for your photograph. But um, what uh, some of the training at, at, at uh, Pratt has instilled in us is that uh, you've got a full frame. It should have detail, you know, even in the shaft. So uh, even though this is bad, it's an acceptable, acceptable image. You know, the lights are nice, the colors are pretty, you know, if you like pitting pink and pastels. Um, and it's a, you know, usable image. But, uh, and thank you, Ken, for uh, doing our tech, tech directing, because um, we wouldn't be able to have such a good show without you. Um, can you hear me? Am I, am I still here? You're still there, Greg. Go there? ahead. Yep. Okay, uh, yeah, you split pictures of the next one. Mm. All right, there. Now, um, for me, you know, and it is a matter of taste, um, I, I uh, went into the settings of the camera and adjusted the iris so that I got the green of the lawn, you know, the yellow of the tile, you know, a little bit of uh, the twilight blue in the background. I got that deep azure blue in the sky. And for me, it's a more appealing image because the the, the detail, you know, it's uh, they uh, have one professor I forgot who that was, um, that said, um, you know, photography, it, it's a it's a language, and you want to have as much to say in every part of the image, so that the viewer has you know more to read, you know, because they you might take this picture and just have somebody who just loves deep you know forest green and that can set it off for them or they like that pale blue in the background they could say that the the pale green to the left of the house and the pale yellows and pinks in the house and the pale blue in the in the right you know upper right of the house of the house behind them you know tells a whole another part of the story so um for me as far as our topic of uh taking better photographs just being aware of all that you're seeing instead of just like laser focusing on, on just getting the lights right, you know, or just getting one part of the image just so that um, there, you know, with if you work with the image, either, you know, while you're taking it, you know, explore your manual settings so that you can get an idea of what 
the camera can do. Um, whether it be iris or shutter speed or, or what, there's just so much that you can do. And then digitally, if you work with the HDR settings where you have uh, three exposures digitally all at one time, and then you know you can meld them together so that you can get a fuller detailing or rendering of uh, of the of the image from the beginning. Um, and that's uh, we didn't get to the secrets of photography, but uh, rendering is important. And I just want to say, as far as um, uh, taking a better picture, for me, you can take it or leave it. Um, having a fully rendered image is. It's a lot more appealing, and for me, it's creamy and lush. And it's uh, the difference between like a, you know, a dime store novel and uh, John Grisham. So that's all I got. You got any input? I'm just switching between both versions. Uh, the first, the original version, okay. which is that, right? And uh -huh. just so that those people out there who are looking, maybe I don't know, depending on the type of screen they're looking at and depending on the lighting situation they're in, they'll be able to tell the difference between this particular image, which is the first one you presented, uh, and okay. then I'll switch to the second one, which is the second one you presented. And if I can switch back between the two, you can see right. the difference. Well, I can't, but it's there's, the a, there's a market difference because in here, Okay. I just love that. Yeah. You have that ability to see that green lawn, right? And then we zoom out uh -huh. and then switch to the first one. This is the lawn is dark and gone, so you can barely see it. Yeah. So just wanted to make those right. people out there aware that that's the big difference here. Go, go, to, go to the second one. Go to the second one in the close up. Okay. And zoom in and tilt down just a bit. Yeah, right there. But you don't, tilt, I'm sorry, tilt up. Uh, okay, that's that. Yeah, but you see, you got so that deep blue. That deep blue in the sky doesn't. You know, you know when you have the gradation, you have deep blue, light blue, and then you get to the lights. That that just it, it's music. It's lyrical. That, that sings to me. So, I, I have a question. Uh, for it. Sure, sure. Go ahead. You you mentioned that you changed the iris of the camera. What kind of camera are you using? Because that tends to be a video term rather than a still photography term. And can you explain exactly what you mean oh, by no. changing that? No, I shot this on my uh, iPhone iPhone 14 Max with the um, in the uh, manual settings where you can go to your app stop and adjust them uh, just like a you know high or high. You know, a 35 millimeter or six by seven or larger medium format. Um, so I went into the other deeper settings and uh, adjusted the uh, f-stop so that I could allow more light in. And I took a couple of versions of it so that I, I got the uh, light quality and rendering that I want. Okay. Just, uh, they, I, yeah, don't discount the, the iPhone's cameras. They are amazing. Most of the, the better um, uh, phone cameras are light years above what we used to shoot in, <laughs> in college. So, um, yeah, just, just get to know your equipment. I mean, if it's an iPhone, you know, a Google phone or whatever phone or, or a 35, I'm, I'm about to step into your world, Ken. I'm about to get a Leica. But, um, yeah, I mean, just just learn your gear. You can do so much with photography, and it just keeps on giving. Go ahead. Anything else, Mark? No, that was the only question I had. I think they're really nice, uh, nice photos. The rendering is really wonderful. Well, thank you. Was thank this you. was your final image from a single exposure? Yes. Okay. Yes, this was not. So, uh, I, I shut off the HDR so that I could. Uh, <coughs> uh, Experiment yeah. or explore the uh, the app stops. Okay, got it. Cool. Cool. All right, uh, Mark is Mark and Marky in the middle. Yep. Mark in the middle. Middle. What do you got for us, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you got me laughing with that one. All right. Uh, <laughs> Good. There's a photograph. All right, this is okay. going to be my, the topic, my last the, the topic is taking <laughs> better photographs. Topic yeah, it's going to be my last photograph. Photograph. Help uh, us take better photographs. Yeah, right. It's the best one. It's the last one from the uh, marathon. I'm not going to do any more marathon from this year. I've been working this for a month now. All right. 
here we go. Yes. I believe it is uh, Susanna Sc uh, Scaroni, who uh, ultimately was the winner of the women's division, of the wheelchair division, uh, 2022 uh, 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 New York City Marathon. Now, this photograph is as it was taken, right? It was taken with this little tiny Leica camera. It's a compact camera, the 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 Leica Deluxe 7, did right? You, did you say Leica? You're shooting Leica, Mark? Uh, sometimes, yes. So it's a little tiny Leica. It's a oh, really wow. cool camera. They've got a variety of iterations of this. Uh, what I what I like about it is you can change the format and, and so forth, and uh, it's complete and you can keep it in your pocket. You know, you can you can make it as big a system if you as you want or as small a system as you want in some ways, but it does have its limitations. So I went specifically to try this camera on this world class event. Don't ask me why. I figured I could do it, and apparently I was able to do so. Now. This photo is as it was uh, in the camera, uh, uh, no cropping. There's a lot of ground in between. And then there's this irritating sign that says taxi drivers wanted. Much more distracting. Uh, may not even be uh, that tasteful to, to put that there. So if you go to the next photo, Ken, you can find that if you just get a little closer, or if I had a longer lens, or... If I do what I actually did for this image, which is cropping it, I get, with the same aspect ratio format, I get a much better photograph. I don't have the distracting sign. I lose the Queensboro Bridge that was there, but it really wasn't adding as much. I get to actually see a little bit of her expression and see the fact that the uh, motorcycle camera crew, uh, they keep up with the leaders of the pack. So it's more of a complete story. And uh, this was my take better photos. Robert Kappa said it uh, maybe, what, 70-some-odd, maybe 80 years ago at this point, to get closer. Sometimes that's not possible. So if you can't get closer physically, you have two other options. You can either uh, use a longer lens, because there are many instances where you're, they're just physical barriers and you aren't able to get closer to your subject. And then uh, ultimately, if you use equipment that's sharp enough, like Leica lenses and some other lenses uh, from other manufacturers, you can use your depth of field and your shutter speed to create the sharpest image possible under the lighting conditions, and then crop. And if you have a large enough uh, image, uh, cropping will not impact your image quality uh, that much in some cases. I don't really like cropping. This is why you haven't seen this photo earlier. But in this instance, how to take a better photo, get closer. One of the three ways, once again, is to either get closer physically, use a slightly longer lens if you can, or crop the image that you do get if none of, uh, neither of those are possible. That's it. Okay. Well, Thank I got you. one thing to, to question. Kirk, I got one question. Um, you had, uh, well, yeah, Kappa is definitely spot on with the, you know, if it's not, if you, it's not good, get closer. But um, you said you adjusted the aspect ratio? How did no, you no, do that? I didn't know. So I, I, I kept it the same. It's basically the same as a full, the similar to a full frame. This is a micro four thirds camera, by the way, but it has the same, it has okay. the ability to change aspect ratios. In this case, I left it the same for the two images. I just brought it into my image editing program and cropped it. That's it. It's the same. Okay. All right. Cause, um, I, uh, I, uh, what I used to play with in, uh, with, uh, in Photoshop and Pofer and post for some folks, um, it, there are settings in Photoshop where you can you can select the aspect ratio. So if you shoot something in, uh, you know, 35, it'll give you the the square equivalent or or the right. Uh, this was six, uh, seven uh, equivalent. Um, I use Affinity. Uh, I just made the one purchase, and so I have the software. I don't pay monthly, uh, so I use Affinity. Uh, it works for me for what I'm doing in my current flow, um, and that's really it. Okay. You got anything, Ken? No, no. <laughs> I know that those wheels are turning. All right. Um, thank you, Mark. That was a. Uh, um, we enjoy your uh, marathon pictures. Don't don't be afraid. Yes. Do not fear. Do not fear. <laughs> Do not fear. Um, winter isn't coming. Winter's here. All right. Uh, taking better pictures, Ken. What do you got? I, I got something that I guess can be related to what Mark was doing, but it's slightly 
approached from a different direction or not even a different direction at all. It's basically the same. And what I want to talk about is, um, yeah, again, traffic if, accidents. If your pictures are not, uh, if your pictures are no good, you're not close enough. After that, right? And so, right. The idea for me is what I call, and what is generally termed as, fill the frame. Uh, it, it, if you fill the frame with your subject, uh, it, it becomes the most prominent and most important thing in the photograph. So there's no second guessing as to what you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to say with your image. Uh, and I, just going through this, if I when I took when I approached this scene. Um, I was walking uh, somewhere in Brooklyn, and I came upon this scene. And there are there are many ways to approach this because if if you know what this is, you realize that you can walk 360 degrees around this thing. Okay, so it has 360 variations multiplied that by another 360 degree variations going in your vertical motion. Okay. And so you have all those yeah. options in which to photograph this thing from the left, the right, the rear, the back, okay? And paying attention to, and again, to, to some people out there, it may seem like it's a very complicated procedure. But actually, once you get involved with seeing what you want to see or seeing what you think is best, you intuitively gra gravitate toward that situation which you don't normally do anyway. So it becomes second nature, All right? And so, so what you're saying is if you, if you square the tangent of the hypotenuse and rotate it around the axis of the tangent, you can get a picture like this? <laughs> you can get one of almost infinite number of photographs that way in every angle perce perceivable around an object that has an availability of 360 degrees in the vertical, the horizontal, and the angular. <laughs> All right. In other words, to say you, you approach your subject from every angle, pick the best angle that suits you, fill the frame as much as possible with your subject, and hopefully that will get you to achieve a goal which you desire now again that is the best way to approach it but you also might find out that your approach is to back off a little bit and have it breathe a little bit but that is something that you do so in case in point i, I can tell you that when i approached this scene i did not only take one photograph and this is the only photograph i took i took about 10 in different various ways around the subject and those 10 were, for me, the most important uh, angles that I thought would give me the visual aspect that I liked. And of course, maintaining, and of course, the, as you change your angle, you also change what's in the background, okay? And so therefore, right. then it becomes, do you right. want what's in the background to be in your photograph or not? And as fast as you think is as fast as you'll contemplate whether it's good or bad in your eyes. And you will either move on or or create the photo. So again, fill the frame. Right. Also, it's a it's an add on to uh, um, Kappa's idea of uh, you know the framework, get closer. But uh, if you you know the better the way to get better pictures is to move your feet. You know, because uh, if you notice, like a lot of people that just take you know snapshots or whatever, they'll not that snapshots are bad. Documenting is important, but. Um, they'll get to a scene they'll stand in one place and they'll take one picture put the camera away and walk away when like you said you know i mean this this is this is what you see but sometimes you need to walk around it to get an idea of, you know, how it looks from a different perspective you know like you say you get a you get a different background you get a different lighting you know, the sun's coming from a different direction, or street light, or something like that. So, and, and there yeah, are you want times, to take better pictures, you know, practice there, moving your feet. And there are times when you'll have to adjust your ISO and your, uh, and, you know, kind of, and your shutter speed and your aperture to kind of get the maximum out of that uh, particular possible exposure, right? Yeah. You know, and then, you know, yeah. Might be at you might be at six point three uh, five hundred second rather than uh, uh, the eleven at um, 
uh, uh, one fortieth of a second or something like that. You know, you you're, you're moving it around. So what do you do? Do you get the the faster shutter speed or the greater depth of field with the smaller aperture? And you you really got to think about it. And then you, then you have to think about whether or not your ISO is in that right right point uh, for getting the most out of your image, uh, what you want to be sharp to be sharp. Uh, and then from there, right. you know, you know, but proximity, I think we all agree proximity is the best uh, advance that you can have for a, a great photo beginning. You know, if you, if you have that, if you have proximity to your or subject, better, or you're, a better you're, photo beginning. Right, you get a better photo, exactly. And then exposure, oddly enough, is, is secondary. Proximity is first. Exposure is secondary. Okay, so that that's mm -hmm. sort of the and question I was going to ask, results. which is sort of what you answered just a bit, but I'm going to ask it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, if a person is just beginning photography and they have their first camera, and they've had it for maybe less than a week, and they, they know they're interested in it and they want to continue, but they really don't have, have a grasp on exposure. Should they concentrate on uh, aesthetics first and deal with ex uh, exposure and, and the technical later? Or is it the technical first? I mean, how to compose an image. What's look, what looks okay. best in a, in a frame? Uh, is, it, okay. is it better to know what looks better in the frame first and use your camera settings on automatic? Or is it best to know how to adjust your exposures and deal with your uh, framing later? I think it's important to know the, the, the how to get a halfway decent exposure first and then work with them symbiotically as you get better at exposure, you'll get better at your composition and work on your composition a little. When you kind of figure that whatever level you're at with composition, you're happy with for a while. If it's rule of thirds only, you can work with that for a long time and then kind of work on getting better exposures because they won't be perfect at first and then once you feel your exposure is where you want it then you kind of get your you know you start working on your composition a little more it's, they go back and forth you know I, I think i think the main thing is is that if you're dealing with digital uh cameras you can you can you can play with exposure in your own home whenever you're there whether it's day or night they have the dynamic range to you, you can you can see if you can adjust the aperture and the, the shutter speed, you can see what the effects are instantly. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And um, so, I mean, the the the, <laughs> the hell we went through uh, with with manual cameras um, is not what most folks want to do now. You know, they want a camera, they want to they want to get that shot now. They want to think about all of this now. It's a now thing, you know, so that's why the cameras are smart enough to, you know, with programs with all of this stuff, to, you know, all the knowledge of, you know, photography and lighting and blah, 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 so that it will give you a, an acceptable picture now. You know? But when you want to get, you know, deeper into it and you want to know, well, it took it this way, but that's not what I wanted, you know, then you got to learn the, uh, the beyond the aesthetics. Composition is big, you know, the, Three big things, you know. You're talking about the rule of thirds, you know. You want to talk about the depth of field. You want to talk about your shutter speed. And, you know, if, if they're running and they're blurred, you can't use this picture. But if you can stop the motion, it's an acceptable picture. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, automatic settings. But you know, to to know for those of those of you who want to know what those settings are, there's no uh, replacement for you know, um, learning the camera. You know, learning what the, you know, find one subject that you like and figure out, you know, go through all the speeds and then go through all your uh, f-stops and um, just equip it, find, find the uh, result that, that you're looking for. And you can use it with, with in, any, in any other circumstance after that. And that's the fun part. Okay. You're taking the shot and you're like, you get to a situation and you'll say, oh, because I know that from last time, I know if I want that water flow to be blurred, I got to slow my shutter speed, but then I got to close my shutter down or, or show, close my aperture down or whatever, you know. And then you're like, oh, if you want the, you know, the only the bird in focus and the woods behind it out of focus, you're going to have to shift your, uh, your f-stop down. So you got your 
aperture priority or shutter priority. That's a lot, but but all of those <laughs> okay, numbers so, and so letters, let me, they're kind of confusing and a little bit daunting at first, but it, it's an experience then. Go ahead, Kate. Let me follow up that with with a with actually a, a, a actually a better one. I th well, not a better one. Do you absolutely, positively, without a doubt, need to know exposure, f-stop, ISO to get a great photograph? What, what was the first part of that? I'm sorry. Do you absolutely, <laughs> positively have to know exposure compensation, f-stop, shutter speed, ISO to get a great photograph? And you I mean can, you can, great the camera, photograph. Sorry. The, uh, well, greatness is normally, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a combination of the aesthetic, you know, the, the event, you know, um, and, uh, you know, if it's photojournalistic, like, like Marcus, the, the uh, person, uh, the world-class level, you know, uh, person that's using the wheelchair, that is timing. That could be a great photograph that could be caught that, you know, person, this high level of achievement, you know, and that believing that handicaps or people, the, the, the phrase handicap is a misnomer. Um, it's good to know, I can say that, but I mean, to get the thing, your, 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 um, I, I can relate the story of that, uh, this, uh, this kid, I won't say kid, teenager, um, he went to his folks and said, hey, my dad, uh, I want to be a paparazzi. They, they bought him, you know, a nice setup, camera, flash, out of everything. And he just knew where to be because he had other friends that knew where the celebrities hung out. And he was making, you know, $600, $700 per picture and didn't really have to know the camera because the camera did everything, you know, set it to automatic. You get your range, pop, 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 and take it to the So, I mean, great photograph. That isn't kind of the top right now, but to take a better photograph, I think that's where we're leaning. And we and the viewing public will have to decide its greatness. <laughs> and dad or, um, or other photographers, or you know, if it's if you enter it in competition, you will find out <laughs> real quick. <laughs> if it wins, oh, yeah, think, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, you know when we were when we were learning on film, there might have been about sixty percent of the uh, cameras. Sixty percent of photography could be done very easily. You know, you opened up the box of film, they told you what the exposure for daylight was right there. And, you know, you'd see when you get your film back how close that was. And you make an adjustment, you could walk with that for, for a good amount of time. But I think now, because, you know, because we are older than autofocus, let's be honest, right? So it's autofocus, auto exposure. That's 85% of the game. And then there are uh, all of the, the little tidbits about being able to capture action. And I think the reason why they have so many frames per second, I think it's up to 120 now or something like that per second, is because... That's video. No, <laughs> that's no, no video. That's, I, I know what you mean, but there are actually still camera systems that are that are touting oh, I understand. I understand. Uh, frames per second. It's because, you know, that's kind of the last frontier of being able to get that still image through the camera without having to uh, know it. I mean, I did not have... Uh, I did not have 120 frames per second when I was photographing the, the marathon, but I, I did have like about 10, and that would have been a dream if we started. We really only had the ability to to get maybe about three or four frames per second, or with a with a motor drive, or as fast as your thumb could could move that uh, winder. So I think uh, the the automation oh that, <laughs> that we have now really makes it uh makes it very difficult to get a bad photograph but to get better photographs you really should know what you're doing because you you want you really want to know when your meter isn't working to your advantage to your vision you want to know when your shutter speed should be adjusted beyond what the automation tells you you want to know when your aperture should be changed and i think that's why bokeh is so popular is because everyone figures that, well if i photograph wide open i get this shallow depth of field and it looks like yeah. i really made a choice mm -hmm. well i mean and and uh, just saying the, that's where you step over from 
uh, I don't want to say snapshot, but a snapshot to a photograph to, you know, where you get the, the artistic input of it, where you're, you can actually, you know, paint the image with light. And if you have your lights and you add, you add a color intentionally, or um, you leave the, your shutter, or you drag your shutter, and you leave your shutter open for uh, a long exposure, like uh, Ken's um, Harlem Nocturnal. I highly recommend you guys looking that up. Our Kenneth Nelson photography, Harlem Nocturnal. He, he, he oh my God, the, the blacks are so creamy. And, and the way he used the, um, the street lights to paint the, the, the frame is just uh, delicious. <laughs> what do you guys got? Is that it? Are we, are we running out of things? We're good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mr. Skinner, do you have anything, any closing remarks? Yeah, I'd say go check out Ken Nelson's Harlem Nocturnal photos if you can. But besides that, I would say uh, taking better photographs, there are a variety of things. We only covered, you know, basically proximity today. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, it's a good topic, and it certainly is the the topic that keeps many, many, many websites running. <laughs> and it, you could rest assured, folks, this is going to be a part one. And so, you got anything to wrap up, Ken? You good? Yeah, I, I, I just want to um, focus on the term better and understanding that better is subjective and to each his own. Uh, so, I don't want to admonish anyone for. Uh, having a certain point of view and then uh, having that certain point of view sort of discouraged in any way by someone saying your photographs are not to their liking and realizing that, you know, not everybody's going to like your photographs. But the important thing is that you like your photographs and there's something about your image that, uh, in, 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 that sort of makes you feel better about not only the photograph but about yourself. And if it makes you feel better about the photograph than about yourself, then I think you're on the right track. You need to keep going with that. Just exp uh, just don't try and figure out why the photograph moves you. It moves you when you first saw the image. And I guess if it still moves you once you've seen the photograph on a screen or on a, on a piece of paper, then you're confirming your thoughts, right? And th so therefore that means that you now need to make the steps, next step and continue to investigate that point of view. I, I have a question, Ken. Have you been back to right. Cosign and Montauk since they are taking that photo? Have they fixed the sign yet? Um, I can't, I don't, I've been in the neighborhood since then, but I haven't been on that particular corner. I hope they didn't. I'd like to go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 you're in New York. There's plenty of uh, bent signs, crumbling buildings, you name it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Oh, one thing. Uh, I admit, like you were saying, Ken, um, you have to find what you like. You also, artists have to develop a thick skin because <laughs> people would tear your work apart. But, you know, that's a, that's a human thing. You know, you can walk out the house with, I, a, I, with I, a blue I, shirt on. Really and people will tear you down for wearing a blue shirt. So, I, What's I, that, Ken? What's I, that, Mark? I was going to say, I think the, the, the street sign photo is really fantastic. I, I, was, I was speechless. That's how, how well done that. Yeah, yeah. You just got to be out there. You know, get out there, get to get to know your camera, and uh, just 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 explore it. You know, have fun with it. it it's a medium, really. You know, and, and once you get to you know the arts of it, you can get to the study the technical part of it and learn the mechanics of it, so that you can get into you know if you choose to, yeah, you can get into the artistic parts of it, which is uh, just going to give you even more joy. So. Um, better like you couldn't say it's uh kind of subjective but uh i highly recommend that you just keep shooting you know, get to know your uh your your art brushes is your camera so enjoy it get to know it and uh we'll see you next time i'm um, break lake that's mark skinner wave at the people mark and that's ken nelson <laughs> and uh we have three black frag grants we were at the pratt institute in brooklyn new york yeah, brooklyn. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time.